that work? Yes. We get a thousand dollars a month from people coming to know us. Just know me. And he hears how him and his wife hear how excited I am about getting to the Baptist church. Because awesome. once I get started, I can't shut up about awesome. it. About how God has blessed mm -hmm. us. Yes. I told Brother Spanky, me and him set up on the altar the other day, Saturday morning at the church, and we talked. Mm -hmm. And I told him, I said, have you noticed that the, of the painting that God is painting of Genesis Baptist Church? Of the people that's in this church? The things? I said, it's just every day I look mm -hmm. and it's, he's added something new to that picture. And then something new to that picture. I said, do you realize that all the talent that God put in this church, a mm. brand new church with the talent that we have. We got some of the best woodworking men on this side of the, the church right here that you can even imagine. And then and then and then God sent Brother Bobby to fill up all the other boys. Yeah. And it's electrical, it's light, yes. plumbing. Yes. I mean yes. just we got a full we got a full course right here. You know? It's just totally awesome. Yes, it is. God has put in one little church. Don't forget my singers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Praise God. I just, I start crying when I start crying. I'm going to sing. Yes. Yes. Now. <laughs> you know, what a blessing. A year ago, I never would have said my brother would ever be. I, it was a dream. But, you know. Dreams yes. come true. It does. It does. God bless us all. We yes. all. We We're all. Blessed. Yes. 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 Father, as we bow before you, we, we, we can't thank you enough for your love and your yes, mercy. Jesus. That's a true, 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 true picture yes. of how you're supposed to love. And it says that to love as God loved the church, and he gave his life for us. Jesus. And Lord, we, uh, we can't imagine that in our yes. little bitty peace of mind. Yes. But God, we just have to believe. And Lord, we just want to thank you for your blessing. Thank you for giving us. Yes. For the things that you're doing. Yes. God, we pray a special blessing on the people that are donating money to Genesis Baptist Church to help us to get in our new church. And God, we just pray that you'll you'll take charge of the service today. Get yes. through, Brother Frank. Give him the yes. word that we need to hear, dear Lord. Yes. Help us to pay Jesus. attention on purpose. Help us to use it in our day to day walk. Father, we just want to honor and cherish and to love you, dear Lord, and, and uh, tell everybody about you. Help us, dear Lord, today to be worthy. And we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know why a lot of people don't do anything in church or they just come to church they don't offer to they don't volunteer and they don't offer because they feel like they can't a lot of people think you got to have a certain this or a certain that to do something in church but that's not true believe it or not the most important position in church is not the pastor it's not the people that get up here and sing it's not the piano player it's the prayer warriors 
the people that pray. And everybody in this room can do that. Whether you feel like you don't have a talent or not, you can pray, and that's what this song is about. Let it help you. I'm too young or I'm too old And I can't sing or teach And no title do I hold Lord, what can I do? For I want to do my part And I want to help the hurting With all of my heart Amen. There's a purpose behind your pain, what you're seeing right now. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <coughs> Amen. Thank y'all for all that beautiful singing this morning. I mean, I'm, I'm thankful that God stirred our hearts this morning. And oh, yeah, I know what time it is. Amen. And I promise you, I'm gonna preach fast if you'll listen fast this morning. But y'all sung for an hour, so I'm gonna preach for an hour. Amen. 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 No, I'm gonna get on through this. Amen. I'm not gonna hold you long. What's well, so old fella said, I uh, always heard him say, uh, I'm going to do you like Elizabeth Taylor done her last husband. I ain't going to hold you too long. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Just want to make you laugh a little bit. Amen. You're going to cry here in just a little bit. Um, 
Now, if you have your Bibles this morning, and I pray that you do, would you look at a, a flip over to the first book of the Bible, Genesis chapter number 37 this morning. Genesis chapter number 37 is where I'm going to be reading. I got a little bit of scripture to read. Um, I preached all over this subject many times before, and uh, I just felt just in my spirit, my heart. I told Tina for a few weeks, uh, I've been wanting to preach uh, along these lines, and uh, God hadn't given me a green light, and he still hadn't given me the green light to preach on favor. I have been wanting to preach for over a month on favor, and God hadn't given me the green light yet, so maybe he's waiting to, to really favor us, amen, before he lets me go in that direction. Not that he already had, but y'all know what I'm talking about, amen. He, uh, God's going to show up in a mighty way, and I ain't going to have no choice but to preach on it. Um, but if you have your Bibles, look in uh, Genesis chapter number 37, and I'm going to pick up in verse number 12. If you'd stand and stretch your legs just for a minute, just to reverence the reading of God's word this morning, amen. The Bible says in verse number 12, And his brethren went out to feed their father's flock in Shechem. And Israel said unto Joseph, Do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem? Come, and I will send thee unto him. And he said unto him, Here am I. And he said unto him, Go, I pray thee, see whether or not uh, see whether it be well with my brethren and well with the flocks and bring me word again. So he sent him out of the valley of Hebron and he came into Shechem. And a certain man found him and behold, he was wandering in the field and the man asking him saying, what seekest thou? And he said, I seek my brethren. Tell me, I pray thee, where they feed their flocks. And the man said, they are departed hence for I heard them say, let us go to Dothan. And Joseph went after his brethren and found them in Dothan. And when he, they saw him afar off, uh, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. And they said to one another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him and cast him into some pit. And we will say that some evil beasts have devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. And Reuben heard it, and he delivered him out of the hands. And he said, let us not kill him. And Reuben said unto them, Shed no blood, but cast him into this pit, that in, that, that in this wilderness, and lay no hand upon him, that he might, would, we might rid him out of their hands, to deliver him unto his father again. And it came to pass, when Joseph was coming to his brethren, and they, they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors was taken from, was on him. And they took him, and they cast him into a pit, and the pit was empty. There was no water in it. They sat down to eat bread. And they lifted up their eyes and looked. And behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their camels bearing spicery and balm and myrrh going to carry it to Egypt. And Judah said unto his brothers, What profit is us to slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and let our not our hand be upon him. He is our brother in our flesh, and his brethren were content. And, and then they pressed by Midian, its, its, its merchantmen, and then they drew up and lifted Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. And they brought Joseph unto Egypt. And Reuben returned to the pit. Behold, Joseph was not in the pit, and he rent his clothes, and he returned unto his brethren and said, the child is not, and whither shall I go? And they took Joseph's coat and killed the kid of a goat and dipped the coat in blood. And they sent the coat of many colors as they brought it to their father and said, This have we found. Now we know now whether it be thy son's coat or no. And he knew it, and he said, It is my son's coat. And the evil beasts have devoured him. Joseph is without doubt rent in pieces. And Jacob rent his clothes and put sackcloth upon his loins. And mourned for his son many days. All of his sons and all of his daughters rose up to comfort him. But he refused to be comforted. And he said, for I will go down to the grave with my son mourning. Thus his father wept for him. And the Midianites sold him into Egypt unto Potiphar and an officer of Pharaoh's uh, captain of the guard. Let us pray. Father, God, I thank you for your word this morning. Father, I thank you, God, for the spirit that's already... Stirred in here, and God just, just got our hearts pumping, and God, I just thank you so much, Father, for visiting Genesis Baptist Church this morning. God, you never cease to amaze me. Now, God, I know the words you've laid on my heart, Father. 
God, I pray right now, God, you would speak through me. God, you'd use me as a mouthpiece. God, you're manifold. God, however you would try to play this instrument this morning, God, I yield myself to you. God, help our congregation this morning. God, help our people this morning. God, help us to be different when we walk out the door than when we came in this morning. God, we love you. God, I thank you. And God, I'm going to go ahead and give you glory for everything that you've done already and what you're going to do in this service. Father, I love you. It's in your name I pray. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen. and amen. The grass withers and the fly will fade away. But the word of our Lord shall stand forever. Amen. amen. Now go ahead and lean over and find you a good neighbor. Amen. I ain't going to tell you to shake their hand or touch them or nothing, but you can fist bump them or just give them an air high five. Amen. Just tell them the preacher needs your prayers. He needs all. Y'all looking at me? Look at somebody. Amen. He needs your prayers. He needs all the help he can get this morning. I'm going to get us through so we can go find something to eat. Amen. I posted that picture on uh, Facebook again yesterday or the day before yesterday. I seen a memory I shared. I think it said a year ago or two years ago where that chicken was walking by KFC behind the bush and said, yeah, though I walked through the valley of the shadow of death. Amen. <laughs> I said, yeah, buddy, I'm going to get you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Brothers and sisters, as you study this scripture and study around and before this, this is a very dysfunctional family. And don't look at nobody. Don't shout amen right there. Amen. amen. This is a very dysfunctional family. Abraham, who is the patriarch, I mean, he is the man, amen, is dysfunctional. Stay with me. He has a son with his wife's servant, Hagar, Ishmael. But Ishmael, Ishmael is not the son of promise. Amen. Have I got a Bible reader right here? And God waits till Abram and Sarah are past their childbearing years. And I've touched on that many times. And I love that scripture, amen. I always say, man, there's hope for us, amen. 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 And they have a son named Isaac. And now Sarah, who has permitted Abraham to lay with Hagar, now wants Abraham to run off Hagar, get rid of her, and Ishmael. And Abraham favors the son of his old age, Isaac. Favoritism, dysfunction, a dysfunctional family. Then, let's keep moving, amen. And then Isaac marries Rebecca. And Rebecca gives birth to two boys. Twins, as a matter of fact, the Bible says, amen. Striving in her womb. Esau, firstborn, with Jacob clutching close right on his heels, right behind, amen. Isaac favors Esau. Mama, Rebecca, favors and loves this young boy, Jacob. Still we continue. Dysfunction. Favoritism. Dysfunctional family. Amen? Matter of fact, if you keep on going, Jacob steals his brother's blessing and robs him of his birthright. And they are angry with each other for years. I just touched on this the other week. Amen? Y'all already know right what I'm talking about right now. But then if you keep reading, they meet again together. And kiss each other and make up. But dysfunction continues on, brothers and sisters. Because now Jacob is married to a woman that he does not love. Y'all remember when I told y'all? Y'all remember when Jacob got married? I mean, he, 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 he married Leah and he thought he was marrying Rachel. Hey, Amen. Y'all remember when I said that the other week? He had to wait all them years and he wound up finding out he married the, the wrong woman. And then he had to wait all them years. Thank God we ain't got to do that now. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'll leave that alone. But he waits for the woman that he really loves. He loves Rachel, so he waits for her. And the Bible says he has some sons that are born to him and has some daughters that are born to him. But Joseph, here we go. Joseph is the son of his old age. He favors Joseph over all of these other children. And so much that he makes him a little techno color coat. He makes him a little techno-color coat, amen, a special coat. A coat, brothers and sisters, of many colors. A coat of many colors. To distinguish him, to set him apart as the one that he truly loves. Amen, my best reason why Tina bought me this coat. She truly loves me, amen. I'm just kidding, amen. But that coat set him apart. And when I pick the story up in the scripture that I just read and you're hearing, amen, in chapter number 37, the boys are out grazing 
the sheep in the pasture. They're out, they're out doing their work. Amen. And, and Jacob sends Joseph to check on his older brothers. He sends him out there to check on his brothers now. What do you really think is going through Jacob's mind to send Joseph to his older brothers to check on them? Just think about this a minute. He sends Joseph, the baby boy, to go out in the field and check on, and really and truthfully, I mean, if you read that, he said to send, send, bring back report, really to just check on them, maybe even to tell on them or tell on his older brothers. Now, brothers and sisters, it's bad enough that he's sending him out to go make a report on his brothers. But he sends him out there with that special coat. It's bad enough sending the younger boy to come back with a report on the older boys, but he sends him out there with that thing that makes those boys mad, the one thing that they really don't like in the first place, that coat of many colors. I wish I had somebody to help me right here. Amen. It's bad enough that he's going to report on his older brothers, but he goes out and makes a report in that coat that they really can't stand. Y'all don't say nothing. I know y'all like my coat this morning. Amen. Amen. I just wore it to prove a point this morning. I, just wanted, I, lo I love stuff and illustrations and things. I'm just trying to paint you the picture. And they see him coming. They see him from afar. Could you imagine if he had this coat on? You'd see him coming all right. Amen. <laughs> I just, that's just the reason why I wore it this morning. I'm trying to paint a picture. Amen. And yeah, I bought this coat before I got them colorblind glasses. But I looked at it after I got them, and I still like it. Amen. Just Tina won't let me wear it too much. Amen. I got a witness on the front row. Amen. <laughs> but Joseph is young, brothers and sisters, and he's naive enough to tell his brothers, and he's told them in the past about his dreams. And if you're not a Bible reader, I might lose you right here just for one second. In his dreams, the sheave is standing upright. And their sheaves are bowing before him. And he's standing as a star. And the sun and the moon and the other stars are bowing before him. And his father Jacob, he keeps that in his heart. Amen. Because not only is Joseph a dreamer, but Joseph is the object, watch this, of Jacob's dream. That's what he is. I'm, I'm, we're going somewhere. Y'all just hang on a minute. I'm, I, I'm excited about getting there. But I know y'all don't know yet, but y'all just... Mm. Because all of Abraham's hopes are pinned on Isaac. All of Isaac's hopes are pinned on Jacob. And all of Jacob's hopes are pinned on Joseph. Amen. And he sends Joseph to come back with a report. Amen. Watch this. In a coat that his brothers can't stand and so all, watch this, of Abraham's, Isaac's, Jacob's dreams are about to die in Joseph, though it seems. It looks like it's all this is stopped right here. But Joseph, he's coming in the distance. And they see him before he sees them, the Bible says. And they say, here comes this dreamer. Here he comes, brothers. Let us slay him, and we will see what will become of his dreams. <laughs> And the Bible says, amen, whoo, I like this. Reuben, his older brother, says, let us not slay him. Let us not, let, let, let us not kill him. Let's put him in, 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 in this pit where no water is. And it's Reuben's intentions to come back later when his brothers calmed down and they got, and got past this and take Joseph out of that pit. That's what he's thinking. And bring him back to his father. That's what he's got in his mind. But it's always a but, amen. It's always, it's always a but sticks in there somewhere, Amen. An Ishmaelite caravan is on its way to Egypt. And Judah says, let us not kill him. Let's don't kill him right here. I mean, after all, he is our brother. I can't stand him, but he is my brother. He gets on my nerves all the time, but he is my brother. I hate that little coat that he's got on. Don't y'all say nothing about my coat, amen. But he is my brother. And, 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 and they take him out of the pit and watch this. They sell him, the scripture says, to an Ishmaelite caravan on its way to Egypt. And then, after they do that, this really got me. They go back and sit down and eat lunch. Just like nothing ain't ever happened. Now just think about that just for a second. They sell their own brother. I mean, it's right here in the text, amen. And they sat down and eat a meal like nothing ever happened. Now let me go ahead and put a, just a pause right there just a minute. That's how bitter envy is in a person's heart, Amen. You can destroy your brother with envy and hatred 
and go to Outback and eat a steak. Amen. Come on, somebody talk to me right here a minute. You can plot against your brother and sleep well at night. I see it all the time. I mean, you can, you can devise a plan to destroy somebody who ain't done nothing to you and just lay down and go to sleep like nothing ain't never happened. You know, it's getting quiet in here. Amen. Mm. I want you to see something in the text. I, 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 want you to, I want you to see something. They say, let's not kill him. Let's sell him into slavery. But that's a distinction, brothers and, si brothers and sisters, without... A difference. Let me say that one more time. I got a school teacher sitting on the back row. She probably already knows where I'm going with this. Amen. This is a distinction without difference. Selling him into slavery, that's what they're doing. But that's a distinction without difference. Because here's what I'm trying to say. Because selling him into slavery is just as bad as killing him. It's just a slower death. Legally, they could not sell their brother. Legally, they could not do that. They could not sell their brother to a pagan because selling him is the same as murdering him. Now, slavery is just murder slowed down. Think about that just for a second. Just let that sink in just for a minute. I wish I had somebody to help me around. Y'all quiet this morning. There, it, 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 it's, it's a difference without distinction. Killing him quickly, selling him into slavery, and letting him die slowly. The difference, brothers and sisters, is time. The difference is time. He's dead either way. He's dead either way. Whether they kill him immediately or die in slavery, he's still dead. And if he's not, watch this, physically dead, he's dead to them. He's dead to them. Because murder, brothers and sisters, if you study your Bible, murder does not begin with a physical act. Murder begins in the heart. It begins in the heart, brothers and sisters. They killed Joseph long before they ever sold him. They had killed him, murdered him in their heart. Amen. Because when you are jealous, when you are envious, look, you don't want what other folk have. You just don't want them to have it. Amen? I mean, you don't want what they got. You just don't want them to have it. That's what it is. They don't want that little coat he's got on. They don't want my coat of many colors, amen, because it don't fit them. It don't fit them, amen? It was made for Joseph. It will not fit them, but they don't want him to wear it. They don't want him to have it. Just like I told you, jealous and envy and all that kind of stuff, amen. You don't want what somebody else has got. You just don't want them to have it. You don't want your neighbor to have money. You don't want your neighbor to have a better car than you got. You don't want your neighbor to have a... Come on, help me, somebody. You don't want nobody to have nothing better than what you got. That's the way we look at things, amen. They don't want him to wear that coat. And the favor, brothers and sisters, that God look, puts on somebody else's life, it don't fit you. It ain't for you because it was not made for you. But, but you don't want nobody else to have favor on their life. Amen. Just because he's favoring them, you don't like it. God's favor for somebody else will never fit you because that favor was not designed for you. Am I making any sense? Amen. I had to throw a little something in there about favor. favor. Amen. I really been wanting to preach on that. That's why you ought not ever get upset or mad or envious toward your brothers and sisters when God is blessing them. Amen. Just be glad he's blessing them. I, I, I'm glad he's blessing you because if he's blessing you, woo, we're right up in the neighborhood. Amen. I'm close by where the blessings is falling. I might be next. Amen. Woo. It might rub off on me. Hey. Don't ever get upset over that. Amen. Because that blessing is tailor-made for them. That blessing won't fit you. That blessing, you can't wear that one, amen. That blessing, but your blessing is coming, amen. Woo, they ain't gonna better wear it neither. Yours is coming, just hang on, amen. Talk back to me if you can, amen. I mean, that blessing's coming if we keep praying, amen, and we keep believing. Look, here it is. You may not can wear a coat of many colors. Right now, your coat might have to have one color. You may not can handle many colors. Amen. Y'all, am I making sense to you? I mean, you ain't, might not be ready for many colors. You can't handle that. Amen. You can't handle the color you already have, maybe. Amen. Maybe somebody can't even handle one color. 
And you're getting upset because God blessing somebody else. God is never going to bless you, amen, if you get upset over him blessing somebody else. I mean, that ain't going to help you at all in your walk with him. I wish I had time to stay right there, but I got to move. Amen. They sold him into slavery. And this point, this point I want to make, this first point I want to make this morning is God is sovereign. So God is sovereign over our circumstance. I said God is sovereign over our circumstance. God, I'm going to say it till y'all get it, is sovereign over our circumstance. Now, Really and truthfully, most preachers I've ever heard preach this, and normally I would too, would preach this sermon from the back end. We'd start down here from Joseph being in the dungeon to wind it up before Pharaoh. I've heard it preached upside down and one another, amen, that way. But I want to look at something. I want to look at, I want to look at how many coincidences that had to happen, amen. That had to happen, that had to take place on the front end, not the back end. All the coincidences that had to happen on the front end for God to get Joseph into Egypt. Now, his father, Jacob, had to have him in his old age. It had to happen in his old age. He had to favor him over his brothers so that his brothers could despise him. If he had never favored him, they never would have despised him. Amen. The scripture says they despised him so much that they could no longer pe- uh, uh, speak peaceably about Joseph or to Joseph. They could never no longer wish him shalom. They never could wish him peace. They could no longer speak to him. They envied him so much they wouldn't even talk to him. Now, the father had to send the older brothers to keep the sheep in Shechem. And he had to send Joseph to check on them in Shechem. He had to send a man to meet Joseph at the right time in the field for the man to tell Joseph, <laughs> they ain't in Shechem. I know that ain't good English. Don't, don't, don't throw nothing at my sister sitting back there. They ain't in Shechem. I heard them talking about going to Dothan. That's what I heard them say. Now, if that man had been walking in another direction, the story would have had a totally different ending. It would have turned in a whole different way. Somebody ought to help me right through here. His brothers had to see him before he saw them. Reuben had to decide to put him in a pit. And an Ishmaelite caravan had to be just right on time coming down on, in a route, amen, going to Egypt at the right time to see the brothers eating after they had dropped their brother in the pit. Jo- look, had they had gone another route, they'd have went in another direction. Joseph never would have wound up in Egypt. If he'd have never wound up in Egypt, he never would have wound up in Potiphar's house. If I got a witness right there, if he'd have never wound up in Potiphar's house, Potiphar's wife never would have tried to seduce him. If Potiphar's wife never had to try to seduce him, he never would have wound up in a dungeon. Amen. If he'd have never wound up in a dungeon, he never would have met a butler and a baker. If he'd have never met a butler and a baker, he never would have interpreted their dreams. Amen. If he'd have never interpreted their dreams, he never would have been brought out of the dungeon. If he'd have never been brought out of the dungeon, he never would have stood before Pharaoh. If he'd have never stood before Pharaoh, he never would have interpreted Pharaoh's dreams. If he'd have never interpreted Pharaoh's dreams, he never would have given, been given the second chair in Egypt. Amen. If he'd have never been, making, been made prime minister in Egypt, he never would have known that there was going to be a phantom in Goshen. Amen. And if he'd never been a phantom in Goshen, his brothers never would have come to Egypt to buy some grain. If his brothers would have never come to Egypt to buy some grain, he never would have had the opportunity to tell them, you meant this for evil. Hey, but God, amen. God, somebody ought to help me. God meant it for good, amen. I, look, I was on my way to hell, amen. But God was right there, amen. He meant it for good, amen. I was broke, but God. There was times in my life I was hungry, but God, amen. I was lost, but God, amen. But God. Oh, my, but God. God is sovereign over your circumstance. Just for a minute, just for a moment, I want you to think about something. When you have time, I want you to really think about something. I want you to go more in depth with what I'm about to ask you to do now when you have time. When you have more time and you're by yourself, I want you to really think about what I'm going to ask you. But for right now in church, just for shouting purposes, run through your life right quick in slow motion. Just run through your life in slow motion. Maybe some of you run back to 1973 
in slow motion and think about those things that come to pass. Amen. Look, run through 2001 in slow motion. Run through your divorce. Amen. In slow motion. Run through the death of a child, the loss of a mother, the loss of a sibling. Look, run through all your problems in slow motion. And while you're going through all that and going through all them, it looked like you would never get out of it. Amen. If I got a witness right here. Because they're in slow motion. But speed up the lens. Speed it up just a little bit. Speed up the camera and see that when you got to the end of that problem, amen, on the other side of that problem, God was standing right there to open a door that seemed like was just boarded up and closed in your face. And I know it looks like you're never going to stop crying sometimes. It looks like you're never going to get out of depression. It looks like you're never going to smile again. It looks like the sun going to never shine again. But if you can wait on the Lord, amen, be a good courage. Woo, he will. He will. Strengthen your heart. Won't he do it? Won't he show up? I said, won't he do it? He'll be a father for you. He'll be a mother for you. He'll be a deliverer for you. He'll be a company keeper for you in a time of trouble. Amen. Yeah. He'll be there. He'll do it. Amen. If I never had a problem in my life, I would never know I had a God that could solve it. Right. Amen. Yeah. If I never went through anything, I'd never know God could deliver me out of it. Right. You see, whoo, old slew foot. Amen. If you don't watch him, if you don't watch the devil, he'll strike you with a disease. He'll tear you down. He'll chew you up and spit you out on the other side. And I've talked about this two or three times before, but this is a good place to put this again. He'll, he'll, this, this, is a good, this is a good, good, good right here to drop in. He'll strike you with something called spiritual myopia. Spiritual myopia. Myopia is an eye problem. That restricts your field of vision. Mm. Somebody don't know when to shout. Amen. <laughs> myopia restricts your field of vision. Spiritual myo myopia is a spiritual problem. Oh, I'm going somewhere. Y'all just stay with me. That restricts your field of vision. Ooh, wait, hey, ooh, wait, brother Frank. That's good preaching right there. I'm, I'm just going to high five myself. Amen. <laughs> because the devil can get you so depressed that you can only see What's in front of you? He'll get you down. Amen. He'll get you down. You can't see no farther than right here. You can't see no farther than your mess. I wish I had one more witness right here. You won't be able to see when you have spiritual myopia. But allow the Lord to remove the cataracts from your eyes. Amen. Of your soul. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Let him take it off. Amen. You'll see that God got something way better. Up the road, amen. You'll see God's got something else waiting. Look, you, you, look, you just see what's staring you in the face right now. You just wait till God pulls the veil back and you see what's down the road. In your spiritual myopia vision, you just see just a little bit. You can only see just a little bit in front of you. And you start complaining about what you don't have. Oh, my. Oh, brother Frankie, don't, don't go there. Uh, you, just, you start complaining about what you don't have. You don't have it, amen. Instead of praising God for what you do have, amen. Hey, help me right here, amen. Because whatever God takes from you, you still got some more left, amen. Hey, I said he got some more left. I'm about to shout by myself. No matter what I lose, amen, I still got a little bit, amen. No matter what goes on in my life, I still got the Lord to hang on to, amen. God will never leave you empty-handed. I was thinking about this. I was thinking about it this morning. Matter of fact, I was thinking about it laying in the bed last night about this. And I've testified about a lot of this stuff all the time. I know it's just like a broken record sometimes, but I can't help but think of what God's brought me from. Yeah. Yeah. Satan is constantly...